Alex, um, were you at all surprised or when you heard the news yesterday? Um, I don't know about surprised when you missed the playoffs for 13th year in a row and you've had a couple cracks at it now. It usually results in someone getting traded or fired or um, something along those lines. And so obviously um, when Donnie got fired, it was wasn't easy, but um, it happens. Accountability is such a buzzword in this game, Alex, but is it something that this group needs um, to take that next step? Needs and is ready for. I really do believe so. I think, um, yeah, I think Donnie did a really good job developing a lot of guys in this room, myself included, and helping our games. And, but um, our next coach will be one that holds us accountable and one that makes sure that we're performing to our best or you're not going to perform at all. So um, I'm excited for that. I'm excited for the challenge. Um, I think we can do great things in this locker room. I know we can do great things in this locker room and it wasn't good enough. Do you believe the problem started in training camp this season in particular? Um, yeah, I guess that is day one. Um, I mean, I, you can't pinpoint it to one thing or another, but we're going to come in and training camp's going to be it's going to be good this year. It's going to be brutal. It's going to be physical. It's going to be uh, hard work. Um, you're going to have to come in and earn it. Every inch you get, you're going to have to come in and earn it. Is a kind of a brutal training camp going to be important to not chase the season? I mean, you guys have chased the last two seasons, and that's why you fell short. Yeah, that's one of the big reasons. We've had strong finishes, I guess you could say, the last couple of seasons. But like you said, when you're chasing it, just like in a game, if you don't start off well in games and you're chasing it in games, it's a lot harder to win. So uh, it's a lot harder to make the playoffs when you're however many games below 500 we got through the first half of the year. And it didn't matter what we were going to do second half unless we were damn there perfect, we weren't going to make the playoffs. So fell short. Based on what you've said, and Kevin said he's looking for coaches with NHL coaching experience, what else is important to you and who is the next leader of the team? Oh, um, oh, I haven't really thought about that yet. Um, you know, I, I, I know that Kevin and his support staff are going to make the right decisions when hiring our next coach. Someone that, like you said, is going to hold us accountable. Um, someone with some experience, a good hockey mind, smart. Um, and I think someone that brings energy into this locker room. I think, uh, at times we weren't able to maintain energy and at times we weren't able to gather, I guess, and create energy and uh, momentum ourselves. And um, someone that's able to do that and help us uh, reach our full potential. Alex, Kevin expressed confidence in the core that you guys can get it, get it done right. I mean, what does this belief in you guys mean to you? Yeah, I don't think uh, his belief in us has ever really wavered. I think. Um, that's something that we have to look upon ourselves and realize that we're being, we're being given an opportunity that, you know what, it, it doesn't it doesn't come easy and it, it's not just handed out. So um, we have to continue to work to be better and it's going to be a lot of pressure on us, but we're going to embrace it. Alex, yep. you're one of the um, few guys on this on this team that has experience playing in the Stanley Cup Finals. How can you use that experience, sort of moving forward, to maybe get this team eventually over that over that hump? Yeah, uh, I mean it starts by, like Lance said, first day of training camp. That's where it begins. Doesn't doesn't begin after game 82. That's for sure, or else it's too late. So um, once we get to that point, we'll talk about it a lot more. But it's about the regular season right now. It's not about playoffs and playoff hockey. You have to get to that point, but you have to start at day one of training camp. And game one, two, three have to be just as good as games 79, 80, 81, and, uh, and then pass that too. You grew up a fan of the Goatheads. <coughs> what would it be like if Lindy Ruff was the coach here? <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, that I. I think I've probably watched Lindy coach about as many games as I've actually played 
well, more than the amount of games I played for the Sabres. So he was my favorite coach growing up. I, that was the teams that I watched and sat on the couch and watched with my dad and um, to see what he, he was able to do um, with those teams was really cool. I, I, it was really special. I got to actually meet him for the first time this year. Um, and I didn't even think about that. Lindy's a great coach, a really smart guy. I, I've always been a huge fan of his. I have no idea. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd, be pretty, that'd be pretty cool, though. <laughs> Dream come true for me. How about Gerard Gallant? Turkey. Um, that's another one. Oh man, he's he was an unbelievable coach. I, I really I loved him. Obviously, I had him uh, my first couple years uh, in the NHL. Um, went to Stanley Cup final with him. Uh, that's another fantastic candidate. Uh, if they were looking at those two guys, I, I'd be extremely happy with both. I think he brings um, uh, he, he he brings a lot of uh, firepower and energy with him. Um, he was great for me. Uh, he was. He really held me accountable as a rookie, as a young guy, and uh, I wouldn't be the player I am without him today. So, um, yeah, no, that's a, that's, a, that's, I like both those guys. And we got a third one. Anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go down the list, guys. How important is it in a head coach to have somebody who not only holds you accountable, but also takes the time to build relationships? So when they do hold you accountable, whether it's ice time or taking you out, that you know why. You know, it's. So the message sinks in, I guess, better, perhaps. Yeah, I guess that was one of the things with um, Jar Galan, actually, that I, that I realized really early on was he can come down the bench and he can yell in my ear. But five seconds later, he was tossing me back out there because he knew that I was going to get the message. And so that was, that's interesting. And I've had coaches throughout my entire hockey career, uh, some that are able to do that, some that um, have uh, maybe struggled with in the past. I mean, I obviously had a really good relationship with Don. I've known him since I was 16 years old. And, um, and, and so that's maybe different for me opposed to other guys on the team. And, but uh, if you're able to get a, a coach that's able to do that with every guy, it, it's really big, I think. Um, and it helps a lot. And it's, it's not just me as a rookie. I mean, he would get into it with older guys too on the bench and he would make sure that they're playing at their best. And, um, it, it, it is really important for a coach to be able to do that. Alex, there were times this year where you guys after games would talk about we didn't compete hard enough. Does compete come from each individual? Does it have to come from each individual when when, when we're talking about compete? It takes all 20. It does. It takes all 20 for the full 60. And uh, anything less than that, you're going to lose in this league. You see how tight it is. You see what happened one point. It wasn't even a point. It was a regulation win um, that kept Detroit out of the playoffs this year. and put Washington in and so it's it's a game of inches and it, it, it takes five minutes not being at your best to make you miss the playoffs and uh, lose out on a chance to win the ultimate prize and so um, compete does start individually but it, but it also is a collective effort so it's everyone in here 20 24 20 however many guys we're going to have coming and sitting in these stalls next year it's going to take us all. Does it stick in your craw more that it ended up being Washington given that you just beat them twice? No, I hate every team that's in the playoffs right now. <laughs> Honestly, I'm jealous, I'm envious, I'm, I wish I was there instead of them, and I'm going to work that much harder to make sure that I'm contributing to helping our team make sure we are instead of them next year. I was kind of going off of that. Jeff earlier was saying that it's up to each individual how they use the disappointment of not making the playoffs as motivation. So for you this offseason, how does that motivation manifest itself? It's going to drive me each and every day. Every time I'm in the gym, every time I'm looking at ice cream, making sure I'm no, it's no, but it's it, it is. It, it's going to be stuck in the back of your mind. And um, this this off season, I'm going to attack it like I haven't. I've never attacked it before, and I'm going to try to push myself to limits that I've never even come close to. And that's that's my mentality going into this summer. Um, I'm going to take the next couple of weeks to decompress, think about the season, um, think about the ups and downs, think about the guys that I was able to, lucky enough to play with and put the jersey on with. But after that, it's, it's, it's business as usual. It's training. And this is, this is one of the reasons why we're paid. And we talk about coach to player accountability, but do you feel like this team maybe needs more player to player accountability? And do you think that's something that you, maybe you take charge of this summer as well? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do believe so. I think that's something that every winning team has. Um, the leadership core is able to get on guys, um, bring guys with them instead of push guys down. And 
or pull, do, pull guys down. And so having that um, ability to really um, elevate your level along with the guys around you, I think is huge. And so that's going to be um, on our core in this locker room is to bring everyone up to the level that needs to be played. And on that note, there are more organizational leadership opportunities going forward. You've worn the A now. Is that something you're interested in going forward? And where do you see yourself fitting in as a leader like that? Um, you know, I, I don't care if I'm wearing a letter, honestly. I, I think that I've, uh, in this locker room, I think my teammates um, see me as a leader, and that's all I care about, honestly, is being able to be the best that I am and contributing as much as possible. And if they don't need me as a leader, I'm, I'm, I'll fall in line with the guys that are in this locker room because we have a lot of leaders in this room and a lot of guys that could wear letters. And uh, so I'll, I'll follow any of these guys in the battle and, the, and I'll do anything that it takes to help us win. But they will need you as a leader, though, won't you? Don't you think they will need you as a leader? I think I bring some experience to the table that will help our team win. That's it. Whatever I can contribute as a, as a player, as an individual, I'll contribute. You mentioned that you think this team is ready for more accountability. What are some signs to you that that, that is the case? You know, I, I've seen throughout this season, throughout last season, I, I, I've seen a developmental standpoint. I've seen guys, um, some shine under pressure, some, I mean, I, I think UPL is a really big just example of that, just how we were riding with, we had three goalies. We didn't know who was going to be starting. We didn't know what was going on at the camp. We didn't even through part of the season. And then uh, next thing you know, from January on, he became our number one goalie. He was one of the best goalies in the NHL. And but it wasn't easy for him. He had the battle each and every day. And it wasn't. He had some really bad days. He had some really good days. And um, we, we need guys to follow suit and to be able to say, hey, like, I got to put it upon myself. I'm gonna, there's going to be pressure from other guys in this locker room. There's going to be pressure from the coaches. There's going to be pressure from people outside like you guys. And I'm going to have to rise to the top. I'm going to have to be the best that I can be from that pressure and that accountability. Alex, is the directness that guys like Turk and you know, guys of that sort of ilk as a coach, is that something this group must have going forward? Uh, I, I think that's that's the, um, that's going to be decided by Kevin and the management group there. Um, I, I think that that could really help our group. Personally, I believe so. I think, um, yeah, I mean, that's that would be a good asset to have, I guess, yeah, as a coach. How do you hope guys handle, process, you know, Donnie getting fired and then getting used to or adjusting to the new coach? Like, well, what's the best way? A lot of young guys in this room that haven't been through it before. I hope they realize that it's not just on Donnie. I hope they realize that a lot of it's on us in this locker room. And um, I said before, he's he's a great guy. He's an unbelievable human being. I think he's a great coach. I think he's he's going to continue on his coaching career and have a lot of success. Um, and we're one of the reasons why he's not coaching behind our bench anymore. And so you have to realize that, and you have to make sure that the next guy stays longer than Donnie did. And the, and the only way to do that is to have success. What stood out to you about the, way, the steps JJ took this year? Yeah, I think uh, obviously you saw him produce at a, at a really high pace. You saw him score a lot of goals. Uh, I personally saw all the stuff he did away from the puck. That, that really changed. I saw that, uh, what was he, plus eight this year? Or he was plus eight or nine. He uh, was getting chances on these five on, like uh, when we were five on six, he was... Um, he was out there in tougher situations, and that was because he earned it. I thought he started playing a lot better defensively, started playing better away from the puck, started being a little bit more physical and harder to play against um, and doing the right things. And I think he's got uh, several more steps to take. I don't even think he's come close to reaching his full potential, and I don't even think he's come close to um, scratching the surface either. So I, I think he's going to be a fun player to watch going forward, and he's going to be a huge key to the reason why we're winning. You gonna play Worlds again? Uh, I am not. I am going to. T I uh, I informed them that I'm not going to be able to play Worlds this year. Alex, uh, thoughts on your brother signing his entry level deal? Oh yeah, uh, huge congrats to him. Uh, I was really excited for him. Obviously, he had the chance to maybe turn uh, as a free agent uh, this summer, and he decided to uh, stick with Montreal and. Um, no, it's awesome. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable organization. Uh, original 